Hello everybody, I am Deepika from Learno Hub, a free learning platform where you can study physics, chemistry, maths, biology absolutely for free only at learnohub.com. So students, today we are going to continue with the chapter, the nervous system. So we have already spoken about many things like brain, like the parts of the brain, the regions of the brain and their functions. So today is the time when we will be talking about the spinal cord and more topics from the, this chapter. So today we will be finishing this chapter. So let's start with our topics. So starting with the first uh, topic of today's session, so that is the spinal cord. So spinal cord, it extends, so uh, we have talked about brain. So uh, inside brain, we have various parts, right? And the lowest most portion that we call is medulla oblongata. So it basically spinal cord extends from medulla oblongata of the brain and it runs throughout our backbone and it ends at se second lumbar vertebrae uh, which lies within the vertebrae, right? So basically this, this spinal cord lies within our backbone, within our vertebrae, right? So uh, there, there is arrangement of like we have studied in brain. So there is white matter and there is gray matter. In the same way, there is white and gray matter in spinal cord too. So the just that the there is reverse in the order, right? So over here, the gray matter is on the inner side and it contains cell bodies and motor and association neurons. Whereas the white matter it lights on the outer side and it contains exons which run longitudinally to and from brain and even crossing from one side to the other side right so it <clears throat> the white matter contains exons which uh, which runs longitudinally from the brain correct so basically the the gray matter is so this is the uh, this is basically an internal structure of our um, spinal cord so the gray matter it lies on the inner side <coughs> so this this uh, contains the gray matter and this portion right so the outside portion contains what it contains white matter okay so inside the gray matter you will see association neurons and there will be the motor neurons as well that is the efferent neurons right and talking about white matter so white <coughs> matter contains exons okay so i hope the internal structure the basic internal structure of spinal cord is clear to everyone now let us talk about a very small structure that is present at the center of the spinal cord so this is a small central canal which runs the entire length and it is continuous with the cavities of the brain and these cavities are called as ventricles right so where we have studied ventricles so we have spoken about ventricles in our circulatory system right so lower ventricles left and right right so here the cavities of the brain they are also called as ventricles now as we have studied in brain that there is a fluid which which acts as a cushion so in the same way our spinal cord is also filled with a fluid called as cerebrospinal fluid which has cushion right so it basically acts as a cushion and it is a medium of exchange of food and materials waste products and respiratory gases with the neurons right so like our cells every cell in our body if we just leave our brain our spinal cord so every cell of our body needs oxygen they need food they need nutrients and they also need to exchange the waste products so same is the case with our brain and spinal cord also so they also need oxygen so they also need nutrients they also need they also produce waste which has to be thrown out so there should be exchange of waste material as well and the exchange of respi respiratory gases that is the cells will get oxygen and in turn they will throw out carbon dioxide right so that all those functions are performed by cerebrospinal fluid so this fluid is super duper important next is the membranes the membranes are very important if you see the structure so you will find the three membranes there is dura mater 
<laughs> there is arachnoid and there is pyometer right so dura mater from outside to inside right so dura mater arachnoid and pyometer clear now talking about the functions so the functions are super duper important in all the cases right so functions the first function of a spinal cord is to um, check the reflexes below the neck so below our neck so our body performs many reflex actions right so if you touch something hot so you immediately remove your hand right so that is a reflex so all those functions they are performed by spinal cord now spinal cord it conducts sensory impulses from skin and muscles to the brain right so what happens so when you touch so this is a hot iron right hot iron so as soon as you will come uh, your hand will uh, your finger will touch this right so uh, then the sensory neurons that are present in your skin will send this signal to whom to spinal cord right and so this will be what this will be sensory neuron right so n e u r o n right so it will send sensory impulses from skin and muscles to the brain and finally it will conduct motor response from brain to muscles to uh, of trunk and limbs right so all the muscles <coughs> now as soon as we receive a, uh, information from the sensory neurons so uh, in the same way our brain will tell our muscles to perform an action to to perform a reflex right to perform some function uh, say uh, your hand muscles to just remove the hand if you see a dog and you are uh, you are very scared of it so what you will do you will you will you will start running like anything right so your brain will tell your uh, limb muscles that you have to run from the situation so all these functions they are performed by spinal cord now the peripheral nervous system so peripheral nervous system basically contains all the nerves which carry impulses to and from the central nervous system right so nerves which carry impulses to and from the central nervous system right cns so peripheral nervous system carry the nerves so these are these are of two types this peripheral nervous system is divided into two types so it has two subdivisions the one is uh, somatic nervous system and the other one is autonomic nervous system so basically this is the automatic one which we have already studied right and in case of somatic nervous system there are two ner two types of nerves the cranial nerves and the spinal nerve so next is cranial nerves so cranial nerves as the name suggests they arise from brain and they are there are 12 pairs of spinal nerves so out of those 12 pairs some are sensory some are motor and some are mixed so these are the three types of cranial nerves so sensory as the word suggests so something that is arising from our sense organs like skin like nose like ears like eyes right so all these are the sensory nerves like olfactory nerves they are for olfaction olfaction is smell right so they are for our nose right optic nerves they are they are sensing from our eyes right so optic is related to eyes then auditory so they are for ears the next one is motor so motor cranial nerves so these are the nerves which are going to our muscles like eye muscles you can say so if you are standing somewhere it is very windy and some some particle um, some particle my um, comes near to your eye so immediately your eye muscles uh, i i mean it will send signal to your brain the sensory nerves will send signal to your brain and brain will in turn send a signal to your muscles eye muscles to close the eye so that 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 particle does not enter into your eye right the next one is the mixed nerve so it has functions of both sensory and the motor nerves so it is a mix of uh, both of them so these are the nerves which are going to and coming from your face and tongue okay so i hope the different types of uh, our cranial nerves are clear to you the next comes is the spinal nerves so spinal nerves so as the name suggests they arise from our spinal cord like the cranial nerves arise from our brain so spinal nerves they arise from our spinal cord so 
cranial nerves were 12 in number whereas spinal nerves are 31 pair so we have 31 pair or pairs of spinal nerves so these spinal nerves out of 31 eight pairs are in the neck region one pair is in the coxial region right uh, 12 pairs are in the thorax region and five pairs are in the lumbar region so these are the total 31 pair of uh, spinal nerves present in our body so this, this number and this region so you have to remember the number and the region where these uh, number of nerves are present these number of spinal nerves are present okay so I hope this is clear so how does a typical spinal nerve look uh, look like right so this is the structure of a spinal typical spinal nerve so it originates from the spinal cord so this is the spinal cord right so this structure if you if you cut an apple right so if you cut it from the center so you'll see these two halves right so it's something like that looks like that so these are the uh, these are the two roots which originate from the spinal nerve so these are called as dorsal root and the ventral root so if you see the difference between a dorsal and a ventral root so this is very simple so this dorsal root has basically a dorsal ganglion right so this is a this is what this is a dorsal ganglion which is present and if you see these both of these both all the spinal nerves they are basically what kind of nerves they are mixed nerves so which means they perform both sensory and motor functions right now these nerves uh, these uh, spinal nerves they enter into the white matter right so they enter into the uh, sorry not white but the in inner portion that has a gray matter and then they go out into the white matter to this horn like structure and from here both of them from this uh, particular area so both the sensory and the motor uh, neurons they they take a different way right this is skin so these has a receptor cell so sensory neuron will take the uh, impulse from the this receptor and bring it on to the uh, over here to the spinal cord and from spinal cord this will send signal to the effector muscles to perform a function okay so this is a typical uh, structure of a spinal nerve the next comes is the autonomic nervous system so if you talk if we talk about autonomous nervous system so it is automatic something that is happening automatically right so the one thing that is very much clear from this statement is that this nervous system controls our involuntary actions so all those actions which are performed by our internal organs so these organs they they are under the autonomic nervous system so it consists of pair of chains of nerves and ganglia on either side of the backbone so there is a backbone and on the either side of the backbone we have we have these pairs of uh, nerves and the ganglia present so if you take a look at autonomic nervous system so it is subdivided into two the first one is sympathetic autonomic nervous system and another is parasympathetic autonomous nervous system right so the uh, sympathetic autonom autonomic nervous system so it arises from spinal cord between neck and the waist region right so these uh, uh, these are the nerves which arise from the spinal cord between neck and waist region whereas if you talk about parasympathetic nervous system so it is located at two places on um, anteriorly in the head right so it is basically at two places one is anteriorly in the head and the second one is posteriorly in the sacral region so where is this sacral region so it is basically at the base of our spine so these are the two regions where the parasympathetic nervous system is located so if we talk about a sympathetic nervous system so it is stimulated by a hormone called as adrenaline so this hormone which we will be studying uh, in our next chapter that is the endocrine system so this particular uh, autonomic nervous system is stimulated by a hormone which is adrenaline which is secreted by our adrenal glands which is present above the kidneys 
so let us now talk about the effects of two parts of ans that is autonomic nervous system so there are two parts one is sympathetic nervous system and another one is parasympathetic system so there are what are the effects of these two parts on various organs of our body right so the first thing that i wanted to make it clear over here that both both these systems they perform opposite functions so if one is say constricting the muscles the other will dilate them okay so uh, at some place if it is like uh, decreasing something so the other one will increase it right so the functions if you just remember the uh, the effect of sympathetic system on various organs so if somebody asks you to write it for parasympathetic system so it will directly be opposite of it okay and a very important thing say uh, if you are in a fight situation right so at that particular time your sympathetic nervous system which doesn't have any sympathy will help you to act to that violent situation right if somebody comes and uh, that that person starts hitting you so your sympathetic nervous system won't have any sympathy and will prepare you to against that violent act whereas if you talk about a parasympathetic nervous uh, autonomic nervous system so this particular system basically tries to calm you down if there is some violent uh, violent act going on or if you have just escaped that violent situation okay so let us talk about the first organ so the first organ is heart so sympathetic system will accelerate your heartbeat so i said what did i say that this particular system will increase your heartbeat so your uh, your anger level will increase and you will go and you will start fighting okay now what will parasympathetic system will do so it will actually retard your heartbeat and it will try to calm you down it uh, uh, even uh, you might be in that situation or you might have just came out of that situation so this particular system will try to calm you down will retard your heartbeat okay the next one is blood vessel so if we talk about blood vessels it constricts all the blood vessels except for one that is coronary vessels right whereas if we talk about the parasympathetic so it will dilate all the blood vessels except for one that is the coronary vessel okay the next one is lungs so lungs have bronchi and bronchioles so this sympathetic system will actually dilate the bronchi and the bronchioles whereas parasympathetic will act constrict your bronchi and your bronchioles the next one is intestine so intestine so this is uh, this is what this is the elementary canal intestine is a part of our elementary canal the small and the large intestine so this intestine so this has a peristaltic movement due to which the food goes from one portion of the elementary canal to the next portion right so sympathetic nervous system will decrease this peristaltic movement this peristalsis whereas parasympathetic system will increase peristalsis okay so these again the opposite functions that we discussed the next organ is urinary bladder so urinary bladder has a function where it stores urine and uh, when you urge to pee then only you uh, then only the muscle splinter muscle actually opens right so something like that happens if you if you just recall your excretory system so over here the urinary bladder the sympathetic system will um, that splinter will con will there will be contraction in the splinter and the muscles will be relaxed whereas parasympathetic system the splinter uh, splinter muscles will relax and uh, the muscle uh, the muscles will contract okay the next is pupil of the eye the pupil in your eye right so this portion the black portion it will dilate right if by sympathetic system and by parasympathetic it will con uh, constrict now coming on to the saliv uh, salivary gland so salivary glands they are present in our mouth region right so it inhibits the secretion of saliva so sympathetic system has no sympathy as sympathy and it will um, 
it will inhibit the secretion of saliva and poor you your carbohydrate uh, digestion will not start in the mouth right whereas if we talk about parasympathetic system so it will stimulate the secretion of saliva the next one is lacrimal or the tear glands so sympathy the the system which has the word sympathy in it right which starts from sympathy so it stimulates the secretion so whenever you you have that sympathy on somebody oh that happened too bad so that those the your lacrimal glands will stimulate the secretion right whereas parasympathetic what will do it will inhibit the secretion the next one is erector or the erector pili or the hair muscles on the skin so sympathetic system stimulates the contraction of these hair hairs so basically what will happen you must have seen in um, uh, during the cold time so uh, i i don't know if you know the word wrong te khade ho gaye right so wrong te khade hona basically your hair so these small hair on your skin they Uh, they they will contract and basically they will appear to be raised right then coming on to the parasympathetic system so over here the hair will be flattened so in most of the cases you will see your hair will be flattened so those uh, it will actually it will st uh, it will keep these um, hair pili very very relaxed right whereas sympathetic when you are very violent in or you are very scared you are in a very scary situation so you, you must have heard or you you must have also used this phrase ki wrong te khade ho gaye so that happens uh, due to your sympathetic system the next is the body so if we talk body as a whole so uh, sympathetic system prepares our body for action whereas parasympathetic prepares body for relaxation okay so i hope the effects of both sympathetic and parasympathetic system are clear to each one of you so there is a very strong connection between our autonomic nervous system and our emotions so if uh, it is very much these emotions are very uh, they very strongly influence our autonomic nervous system so be it an, be it anger be it fear or any other emotion so if you want your body to be healthy you have to actually have a control on your emotions and you have to stay happy so you must have heard people saying so laughter is the best medicine so basically um, having that uh, that trouble free mind or i cannot say a trouble free mind but uh, being happy and not getting in not getting into every single thing uh, and keeping yourself away from the emotions is very important because these emotions lead to high blood pressure stomach ulcers and many other health problems that many a people are facing today because of this emotional stress through which the people go every day right so what we have to do we have to keep ourselves very calm now coming on to our next topic that is reflexes right so reflexes reflexes is a word that is came that came from a latin word which is reflexes so the meaning of the word reflexes is reflected or directed back so there are two types of reflexes so one is voluntary action the another is involuntary actions so this voluntary actions so these actions they are performed consciously so if i want to if i am very tired i'll get up and i'll go to sleep right if if i want to if i am not feeling happy or if i am very stressed so what will i do i'll do something that i like i'll go for a walk right so all those things i want to raise my hands I i want to close um my fist right so all all these things so these are under my voluntary control so these are my voluntary actions which i am performing consciously whereas talking about involuntary actions so involuntary actions are performed unconsciously so we are not aware that uh, i mean i am not aware and i am not consciously allowing my heart to beat i am not consciously allowing my uh, small intestine to digest and absorb food i am not uh, consciously allowing the blood exchange Uh, sorry the gaseous exchange in alveoli and the blood capillaries right so i am not doing that consciously so it is happening it is involuntary it is happening in my body uh, 
on its own right so these are the two types of reflexes so one is voluntary and another one is involuntary so there is a term called reflex action so what is reflex action it is basically autonomic quick or immediate involuntary action in our in the body brought about by any stimulus so i told you a stimulus right so something that stimulate you to do something right so that is a stimulus so any quick immediate response or um, or involuntary action that happens in inside your body to escape that situation so that is a reflex action so this definition you must remember now the differences between reflexes and voluntary actions so reflexes are what so these are the involuntary actions whereas uh, there are voluntary actions that are that we are doing consciously so the first one is reflexes so these are initiated by some stimulus so we have some stimulus which will initiate these involuntary actions whereas voluntary actions they are under our control so those actions which we are doing willingly right the next one is mainly self protective due to environment so these reflexes they are self protective right so uh, a very famous example that we keep on talking about when we touch a uh, a hot plate right so as soon as we touch the plate which is very hot so what we will do we will immediately remove our hand so it is self protective right the next one is voluntary so it is like fulfillment of our desire or goal so i am very thirsty now so after this i'll get up and i'll go and have water right so that is my desire because i am very thirsty so my desire is to have water so i'll get up and go and drink water and come back right so that is under my voluntary control the next one is it com the command originates mostly in spinal cord so the command to do these involuntary acts these reflexes so it originates in our spinal cord and autonomic nervous system and some of them are originated in, in brain as well and then coming on to voluntary actions so these uh, the commands they originate from brain so whatever we want to do right so whatever you wanted to do you wanted to study maths today but i am teaching you uh, biology so what will you do so i don't want to study ma'am i want to study maths so you'll go and search for learn how icsc maths right so uh, the basic thing is whatever we are doing consciously we are thinking from here from our brain but these reflexes these involuntary actions most of them they are arising from spinal cord and autonomic nervous system whereas very few from our brain the next difference is it involves muscles and glands so as we studied about when we are in some scary situation or we are in a situation where we have to uh, like it is a very um, unpredictable or a tense situation so at that particular time our body will start synthesizing there will be a adrenaline hormone secreted by adrenal gland and let me tell you that hormone is called as fight or flight hormone or a stress hormone so whenever you will be in the stress your adrenal adrenaline hormone will increase and that hormone will increase your heart beat that hormone will increase your blood flow right so many other things happen in our body so basically these reflexes or involuntary actions involves muscles and glands whereas voluntary actions involves only your muscles not your gland so if you want to get up and drink water so what what will your glands do nothing right you will get up and you will go and have water so only your muscles will work okay so these are the differences between reflexes and voluntary actions so talking about the types of reflexes so one is natural and another one is conditioned so natural or inborn so these are the reflexes which you acquire from your parents the next one is conditioned or acquired the ones that you have uh, gained through your experiences right so no experiences a previous experience or learning is required whereas in conditioned or acquired you have actually developed that learning during your lifetime so the examples so if we talk about a natural reflex so there are certain protective reflexes like you are blinking your eyes so if there is any particle which comes near to your eye so you immediately close your eye right so that is a protective reflex then uh, coughing 
<coughs> so something struck into your windpipe a food particles you start coughing right sneezing so all these are protective in function whereas we talk about the functional reflexes so as soon as you see food you your mouth uh, the saliva starts coming into your mouth right so that is salivation whereas swallowing so as soon as you eat food you chew it a bit and then you swallow it so that is again a functional reflex that you have gained from your parents right now the next is the condition or the acquired reflexes so like you you saw a uh, say uh, there was a chocolate pudding right so now this chocolate pudding as soon as you saw it right so the saliva starts coming into your mouth because you know that this this is going to be very tasty and that is something that you like you really like much right so i like chocolate pudding so that is why i used a chocolate pudding as an example but if you like something else you can think of that right so as soon as you think of that you just see the saliva starts coming into your mouth right so salivation starts so basically uh, when i'm uh, it is related to the sight so as i am seeing it right so my body starts functioning that that reflex starts coming into my body right whereas um, say if i close your eyes and you like pizza so i i bring uh, i just uh, get that pizza from the hot oven right and i bring it close to your nose so you see so that's a pizza right so you uh, you will be like like again the saliva starts coming into your mouth so basically these are the things that you acquired in your lifetime so when you were born you never knew that chocolate pudding is going to be very tasty or pizza is going to be very tasty right so that these are the things that you learned you developed in your lifetime so when i am using the uh, example of salivation so salivation can also be a natural um, a natural reflex and it it can can also be a condition so say there is some dish that is lying in front of you right so when you have not tasted it you don't know how does it taste and the salivation won't come right but if i keep something in front of you which you have already tasted and you know that this is going to be very tasty i have to eat this right so at that time this sight and the smell will function and salivation will start happening in your mouth right so these are the different examples of natural and conditioned reflexes so let us talk about a very famous experiment that is pavlov's experiment on the dog so this uh, who is pavlov so pavlov he was a russian biologist so he he used this dog as his uh, as his um, you can say uh, experiment or no not experiment but his um, his model right so over here what he did in the the very first day what he did he kept food uh, a food which the dog had already tasted in front of him um, in a plate right in his plate so what happened the dog started to the dog salivary gland started to produce uh, saliva right so he was salivating right now the next time what he did he just rang the bell so he rang the bell because he wanted to tell the dog that it is time for your meal but that does not stimulate that salivation in the dog right so dog does not salivate whereas in c Uh, what he did he kept food in front of the dog and he started ringing the bell also now when he did this continuously right when he kept on doing the same after frequent intervals of time like morning uh, lunch and dinner so when he used to keep the plate of full of food in front of him and he started to ring the bell now the dog developed that connection between food and ringing of the bell now next time when pavlov just rang the bell and there was no food that was uh, that was present in front of him even then the dog figured out the connection between the food and ringing of the bell and the dog started to salivate so this is a conditioned reflex in this case this 
this ringing of a bell is a stimulus and salivation from the dog is the reflex right so when we when we do certain things in a certain manner so people actually develop the connection between them right so as soon as you uh, like if you are going to a school right so your mother knows the bus will come outside the bus will uh, blow the horn and you and your mother will start running out of the house that uh, we have the bus has arrived and now we have to go to school so you have now figured out that connection between these things right so uh, what is basically a reflex action so it is involuntary uh, spontaneous autonomic response which is brought about due to previously learned experience so over here dog what did this dog learn so he learned that when the bell will ring the food will also come so now in case d when there was only bell and there was no food even though he thought as soon as the bell will ring the food will be followed right so bell will be rung and uh, after that food will come right so this is uh, due to the previously learned experience of this dog now some common reflexes in humans so we will be talking about some common reflexes uh, of uh, like the natural and the acquired one separately so the first one is closing of eyelids right so whenever something uh, comes near to your eyes so you immediately close your eyelids right so this will protect uh, that irritant getting into your eyes the next one is withdraw your hand so as soon as you go and you wanted to uh, uh, i mean pluck a rose which you feel is a very beautiful one right so if a thorn touches your skin pricks your skin you immediately remove your hand so that is again a natural reflex then peristaltic reflexes in your intestine again they are uh, that that is an example of inborn or a natural reflex then cuffing so as soon as you eat food and if there is a food particle that enters into your website you start coughing then sneezing sneezing is also a reflex so if any irritant enters into your nostril so you immediately start sneezing so to throw that irritant out of your body the next ones are the conditioned or the acquired reflexes so you know how to tie your shoes by now right so you are in class 10 so you must be aware how to tie your shoes so that is a conditioned reflex that that is the thing that you have acquired or learned during your lifetime the next is playing on a musical instrument so many of you might know how to play drums how to play a keyboard how to play a guitar a violin or anything else right so that is what you have learned now using keys on the keyboard again this is what you have learned throughout your life now applying brakes so as soon as you see somebody coming um, in front of your car you will immediately apply the brakes right so all those things these are the conditioned or the acquired reflexes okay so i hope the the common reflexes are very much clear to you so next comes the difference between these natural and conditioned reflexes so natural reflexes or the simple reflexes or the inborn reflexes so these are inborn and or inherited uh, uh, requiring no previous experience whereas conditioned or acquired reflexes are developed by experience or learning natural or simple reflexes so they are directly related to the stimulus whereas conditioned reflexes they are brought about by condition totally different from the direct initial stimulus so whatever you have learnt right so that that brings whatever you have seen smell or experience throughout your lifetime so these are basically coming from there so they are brought about a condition which is totally different from the direct stimulus right so direct stimulus does not bring uh, the conditioned reflexes so now uh, these are similar in all the humans so if a irritant enters into your nose your or your friend's nose or my nose so all of us will react in the same way we all will sneeze right whereas conditions so it differs in different individuals subject to learning and experiences so there might be a person who is not afraid of dogs right or there might be a person who um, uh, like if i go you go and your friend go and my friend go so we you must not have pluck a rose right but i 
i ha i did that in my lifetime so i know whenever i wanted to go and pluck that rose from its stem so the first thing that i will <coughs> go and do is to look at the area where there are no thorns but this this might happen that you are not aware of it so people individuals they behave differently in different uh, situations it all depends on the learning and the experiences that we have gained throughout our life let us now talk about the reflex arc so reflex arc is basi basically the shortest route that can be taken by an impulse from receptor to effector so see when the responses need to be so quick they need to be so immediate right so in that case a the path of a uh, reflex arc it cannot be very long so it is a very short path so the reflex arc is going to be very short right so it it will consist of two or three neurons like that only so that the information can be passed in a very quick manner so from sensory to uh, from sensory neurons should carry this information to the uh, concerned part and from that particular part the neurons should carry the impulse to the effector muscles right so that has to be very quick so if say i touch if um, if there is a hot iron and if by chance i touch that hot iron so if this response does not reach immediately to my brain uh, say the spinal cord or uh, like the central nervous system how will i remove my hand immediately right so if i will not remove my hand immediately what will happen it will it is going to burn my skin right so this ha this response this impulse has to be very fast so the reflex arc is the shortest route that is taken by an impulse from receptor to an effector okay so the first thing that happens is the stimulus so something that will stimulate the action that will from where the action impulse is going to basically the uh, what how we will respond is started by the stimulus from stimulus it will go to the receptors right so from receptor it it is taken by the sensory neuron or the efferent neuron or the efferent neuron right so these neurons will carry the signal to the brain or the spinal cord from brain or spinal cord so we will call them as central nervous system so from central nervous system this information will be taken the effect what we how we have to respond will be taken by the motor neurons so these motor neurons are also called as the efferent neurons right so they will take this information to the effector organs and effector or organs will uh, will then going will be going will going to respond to this particular stimulus right so this is basically the complete path of how a reflex arc happens so you must remember this this short path okay so i hope this is clear so let us now talk about these components of the reflex arc so the first thing is the receptor so receptors are the group of specialized epithelial cells in contact with the terminal endings of the nerve cell which respond to a stimulus so basically these receptors they they receive this stimulus and convert it into the impulse and then it is sent to the uh, sensory neurons the next one is sensory neuron so these sensory neurons these are the neurons which will take this impulse in the spinal cord that receive the nerve impulse through exon or the terminal endings or which which are in contact with the receptor cells so basically these neurons sensory neurons are in contact with the receptor cells so as soon as the receptor will get the stimulus this impulse will flow to the sensory neuron right so then from sensory neuron this impulse is going to reach the central nervous system so brain or spinal cord will receive the this impulse uh, where the incoming sensory impulse generates an outgoing motor impulse right so as soon as the central nervous system will gain this impulse right so they will see what is basically happening outside so for that there will be an outgoing motor impulse 
so now this motor impulse will carry the impulse which is generated in the central nervous system by the associated neurons to the effector organs so effectors so these are the organs which will actually respond to the stimuli right so whatever is happening outside so uh, whatever is the stimulus so for against that stimulus these effector organs will respond so there are some complex reflex actions also so just think of a situation when you are uh, going in a road right so you are going on a road on a straight road and there is some rope that is lying and in a coiled form right so something like this so what will you do you will immediately jump and step aside thinking of that that it might be a snake right so those are the complex reflex actions so they involves the neurons at different levels of the spinal cord let us now talk about some questions from this chapter so the first question is the diagram alongside shows a section of human brain and its associated parts so answer the questions that follow so the first question is name the parts labeled 1 2 3 and 4 so what is this part so the upper part the fore brain right so it has this part that is called as cerebrum right so next one is this tree like structure so what is this tree like structure called as so this structure is called as cerebellum right now this structure the third part so this is called as pons and this region is called as medulla oblongata right okay so the b part of the question says name the protective membranous coverings of the brain and also mention its three layers right so these are called as meninges so these are called as meninges so they are of three types right so these are dura mater right arachnoid right and pia mater right starting from outside to inside the next is name the basic unit of brain so what is the basic unit of brain so it is neuron right neuron now the d part says write the important role of the part mentioned two so two is cerebellum and we know that cerebellum is a very important part in maintaining the body ba balance and the posture okay so i hope the complete question is clear to you next question says give reasons so the first is the brain and the spinal cord are referred to as the central nervous system why why we refer brain and spinal cord as the central nervous system so central nervous system is the part or the area of our brain which controls all the body functions right whether it be voluntary or involuntary movement body balance coughing sneezing and everything right so that is why brain and spinal cord are refer to a central nervous system the next is neurotransmitters are broken down by an enzyme just after passing an impulse from one neuron to another so between the two neurons is a small gap right a microscopic gap which is called as synapse so as soon as this uh, <coughs> the impulse is transferred from one neuron to another so the neurotransmitters are broken down so the neurotransmitters which are released are broken down quickly or they are chemically inactivated so as to prevent post synaptic cell constant stimulation right so if if there is this impulse right if the neurotransmitter basically which is transmitting the which is a chemical form which is transmitting impulse at this synapse if it remains there so it will keep on stimulating the cell right it will keep on uh, giving that impulse to the next neuron so there will be constant stimulation for that particular action so for that reason uh, the neurotransmitters which are released should be broken down by the enzyme as soon as this impulse has been transferred next question how are cytons and exons Uh, placed in the brain and the spinal cord so <coughs> if we talk about the brain right so the outer portion of the brain contains cyton which has the gray matter right whereas the inner consists of exons uh, 
which is known as white matter but it is totally reversed in case of spinal cord so the outer portion uh, so the arrangement of white and gray matter is reversed in spinal cord so if we compare it with uh, our uh, sorry our brain right so the gray matter is uh, gray matter basically contains cytons which lies towards the inner side and white matter is on the outer side so when we started the discussion the second half of the chapter so this is the first thing that i told you right next question is identify all terms in each set and name the category to which the remaining three belong right so <coughs> exon dendron photon and cyton so if we talk about exon dendron and cyton so all of them are related to neuron whereas photon is the odd one out okay so with this we have completed our chapter the nervous system so i hope all the concepts from this chapter are clear to you so now we will meet in our next video where we will be talking about our next concepts our next chapter so see you next time and as you all know learn no hub free hai par best hai